Hi, my name is Beth and I'm the sewing pattern designer and blogger at Sew DIY. Today's video is a little recap of all the things that I sewed in 2020 and some ponderings on what's to come in 2021. So I live in Los Angeles and we've really been under lockdown since March of this year, which means I've spent more time at home this year than probably any other year. I've been really grateful to have this sewing practice that I love doing. I've been really grateful to have so many supplies, such a large stash that I can just sew with and sew with and sew with and seemingly never run out of fabric. <laughs> I think the last time I went to the fabric store was to get the fabric for this sweatshirt, which would have been back in February. I've ordered a little bit of fabric online, but not very much. I'm definitely not running low on fabric yet although I have started to run low on thread and needles. So I've ordered new needles and I'm working on ordering some more thread. So with all this time at home, I've been able to be really productive. I've done a ton of blog posts, tutorials, a ton of videos. I think this is my 43rd video for the year, um, which is pretty amazing. That's almost one every week. And I've also done a lot of work on my patterns and launched a new e-course. So let's quickly go over the patterns for this year. First up is this sweatshirt. This is my Ali sweatshirt pattern and I relaunched it this year in early February, in early March. I, I did all the work on it in January, February, and then I was going to launch in late March but my travel plans to Italy for early March got canceled and I was able to move up the launch of the pattern to early March. Um, this is a really relaxed, oversized sweatshirt. There are two views, including this one, which is a gender neutral view. Um, so I updated the sizing of this one and added this additional view with the kangaroo pocket. Um, it's really fun, um, has some nice details to it, little like top stitching on the arms and on the back yoke. Um, so this is the Ali sweatshirt. I'll put a link down to everything in the show notes. And for the rest of the year, my patterns really were focused on things that you can wear at home, things that are really comfortable because I'm usually working on things that I want to be wearing myself. And this year was all about wearing things that are comfortable, um, that are stretchy and that are good for just wearing at home when you don't have to go anywhere and see anybody. So it's a lot of stretchy, cozy materials. So after the Ali sweatshirt, I set to work on a robe pattern and a slippers pattern. So the robe pattern, I have a few samples here that I really love. Um, this one is with a vintage fabric and terry cloth. I also did a post on working with terry cloth on the blog. Um, so this is the Tossy robe and jacket, and it's a draft it yourself pattern. Um, it's the only kind, it's the only draft it yourself pattern that I've done so far. So you can just choose the finished measurements that you want, and then the pattern will show you how to draft the pattern pieces for it. So it's a pretty unique pattern. There's no size chart because you can make your robe or jacket any size you like. So it's really flexible. This is a robe out of terry cloth. I also did a robe out of rayon. And here's the jacket version of the pattern. It has these big oversized pockets and turn back cuffs. And this is made in a heavy linen. Um, it's kind of like a springtime fall jacket or even a summer jacket for cold nights um, when you don't need a whole lot of warmth. Um, and I gave a version of this to my mom and she has loved wearing it for her Zoom meetings. So it's a really versatile pattern. I really love using it. Um, it's a really unique pattern too. I think it's good if you wanna kind of dip your toes into pattern drafting, or if you're just really picky about ease and how you like your garments to fit, then this would be a good pattern for you to try out. I've also used this pattern to make a cardigan, um, just like a very cozy, long cardigan. And I have a video about how to sew it here. Along with the Tossie robe at the end of May, I released a pattern for quilted slippers. And this pattern comes with a skimmer style and a booty style. 
And I wasn't really sure if it was going to be a popular pattern or not. Um, I always wear slippers and heavy socks because my feet get super cold really easily. So um, it's something that I really wanted to wear and I thought it was a fun project. Um, but it's actually been much more popular than I expected and it has almost knocked the loot box top out of the number one spot um, for sales over the whole year. And you know, it was only released partway through the year. So I could see it becoming my most popular pattern in 2021 if sales trends kind of continue that way. So I was really pleased to see that everyone else loved these slippers as much as I do. Um, and these are also gender neutral and they go up to about a US men's 14. So very a size friendly slipper pattern. My other new pattern for the year is the summer sweatsuit. And this is a pattern that is very casual, very sporty. It's comprised of a racer back tank top and knit short shorts. It's great for if you're working out or even if you are just lounging around. And I did a few hacks for that on the blog to turn the shorts into jogger pants or into wide leg pants. Um, and I didn't get around to, do any, to doing any hacks with the tank top, so I'll have to do that next summer. Finally, on the pattern front, I have also updated the sizing for my Nita wrap skirt pattern. So that now goes up to a size 32, which is a 58 inch hip. Yeah, the Nita wrap skirt was my very last pattern to update to the new size range. So it's really nice that I can have all that back catalog updated and now I can just look towards the future and making new patterns. So. This year, I think I mostly sewed things for the patterns that I was making, but I did sew a few things just for me. One that I'm really proud of is this Falda jacket. And this is a pattern by Pattern Fantastique. I made it back in January or February. It's a really unique design. Um, I would say it was a challenging pattern to work with. Um, but I have enjoyed wearing it. I especially love this flannel lining. It's super cozy and I used my fabric scraps pieced together to make it. And now that it's cold again, if I ever leave my house, I might consider wearing my jacket. <laughs> Early in the year, I also made a pair of ginger jeans. Um, I've actually been wearing them a lot. I really like this gray color. I think the fit is pretty good. I didn't vlog about these ones because I didn't really love the pattern totally. So um, so I think I want to try the Megan Nelson Ash jeans. I have bought the pattern. Um, I really liked her instructions for the Dawn jeans and I really liked the fit of them. For these ginger jeans, the crotch would just, just feels like a little bit weird. Um, so if I sew stretch, like skinny type jeans again, I'm gonna try that ash pattern. So another project that I sewed early in the year that I really liked and that I did get to wear out, um, like out of the house, was this really long Nina dress. And this is a pattern by Seamwork. The pattern has a turtleneck, but I didn't do the turtleneck. Um, there's a whole blog post about this one. Um, and I made this back in like February, so I did get to wear it. It's a really nice thick knit, so um, it was good to wear out with leggings in February in LA. After that, kind of leading up to March, I was going to be going on this trip that ended up being canceled, but I did do some sewing prior to the trip being canceled for the trip, including this pair of Dexter pants. This is another seam work pattern and it's a knit ponte, ponte. Um, I did blog about them. So they're just like really stretchy and comfortable. I've not worn them out. Um, I didn't really have an occasion to wear them out because it just like, I finished them maybe in May actually. I kind of stalled out because I was so, disappointed about not going on the trip. I'm like, what's the point of making them? I'm never gonna wear them. I'm only wearing sweatpants now. <laughs> but I did finish them and hopefully in the new year, I will have a trip where I can wear them. I also made two blouses this year. This first one is the Morningside blouse by French Navy Patterns. Oh, okay. And I made this to go on my Italy trip. Um, and again, I have not worn it outside the house, but I did vlog about it. And then in November, I made this Meadowood blouse. This is by, this is a pattern by Straight Stitch Designs. And I did blog about this one too. Um, this is a fabric that I got in Helsinki last year. 
Um, just a, like a really pretty drapey oversized blouse, totally my style. Um, kind of definitely like a black and white print theme going on for my year of blouses. The other thing I sewed this year were some bra tops. I did um, the K bra top a few times and again that's blogged. And then I also made a one piece swimsuit using um, this vintage stretch and sew pattern. And I did not blog about this one, um, but I have been wearing this swimsuit. I am lucky enough to have a pool and hot tub at um, my condo complex. So I can go over there and if no one's around, I'll go swimming or hang out in the hot tub. So I did get to wear my swimsuit that I made this year. So this is one quilt that I made this year. I made this using my improvisational style. I teach how to make improvisational quilts like this in my new e-course, Improvisational Quilting for Garment Sewists. Um, and I've been doing this method for about four years. I take the fabric scraps from all my garments um, and I turn them into these really beautiful and useful quilts. It's a really fun way to sew, really relaxing. Um, I'll put information down in the show notes so that you can check out more about the course. Um, I really find it the best way just to relax and decompress while I'm sewing because I don't have to make as many decisions about what I'm doing. So if you want to learn something new in 2021, I definitely encourage you to check out that course, especially if you have a ton of fabric scraps and you're looking to clean up your sewing area. This is a great way to use your fabric scraps. So I finished a number of quilts and then I have two more quilts that I have been working on but have not yet finished. One of them is this semi-improvisational quilt. I found a bunch of old quilt blocks in the closet and just on a whim, I started sewing up all the scraps in the quilt blocks and I made this kind of random quilt top that I'm calling my rejects and leftovers because um, I have another finished quilt that used some of the blocks um, that I was making during the time when I started with these fabrics. So these are just, yeah, the rejects and leftovers. I still have to quilt it. I think it's maybe not the most beautiful quilt, but I kind of love it anyway. And it really felt like a cathartic make just sewing all these fabrics together. My other still in progress quilt is my single girl quilt or freewheeling single girl quilt. And I'm doing a queen size. So there are four columns of four rings and I've done all of my red pinks and all of my like, yellow and brown um, blocks and I'm partway through green and purple. So I've made a lot of progress this year, um, but I'm not done yet. I'm hoping that I'll have a little bit of time before the end of the year, but it's already the 29th. So um, it might just be, you know, an ongoing project. One more thing I made this year that I don't have with me at the moment is the Audi play suit. I'll put in a photo. Um, this is a pattern by Amy Nicole. I really loved making this jumpsuit. Um, I have a blog post about it. It's really fun. Again, another thing that I didn't get to wear out this year, but I hope that I will next year. So as I'm getting to the end of 2020, I'm obviously thinking back over everything in the past year, thinking like, is there anything else that I want to finish? And I've been pretty good about not having too many unfinished projects. I have those two quilts that I just mentioned. I have one knitting project and I have one macrame project. So I think that's not too bad. Um, I finished a few knitting projects this year. I only just learned to macrame this year. So, you know, <laughs> so it's not too bad. Uh, my studio is still covered in piles and piles of fabric. I really, I'm kind of wanting to get some time just to sew whatever I feel like sewing in the moment. I feel like I've had a lot of things to kind of check off my list and like, oh, I should be doing more marketing or I should do a tutorial or this or that. And, you know, I really just want to kind of be hanging out at the sewing machine and sewing some stuff. So um, I still have a few Christmas gifts that I need to finish. I am making a dog coat for my brother's dog and I'm having him confirm some of the measurements for me because this dog coat seems really, really big, but I've never met this dog. So it could just be a really big dog. So I have like a few little projects I still need to finish. Um, but I, you know, I'm just not sure about 2021. 
feel like 2020 has made it so hard to plan anything. Um, you know, it's made me really nervous to want to set a lot of plans because I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know when things are going to happen. I just, you know, really have found more happiness by living in the moment. So maybe that's kind of my goal for 2021 is just to stay in the moment and really enjoy what I'm working on. I do really believe that when you make things from a place of joy and happiness and ease that they come out better. Um, you know, I spent a lot of years where I would kind of like push through the end to finish something. And if I wasn't feeling it, I would often not be very satisfied with the project project at the end. So I think it's really important if you're feeling frustrated with a project to kind of take a break and then come back later when you're in the mood for it because um, the results are just better. So I want to be doing more of that, really be more mindful about working on things that I'm really passionate about. So I do have ideas for patterns that I want to make in the new year. Um, I think I'll kind of decide as the time comes what I'll be working on. I have some little post-its in my planner that I am just ready to move around to different months as needed. I also want to work on an e-course for beginning garment sewists. So it would really just teach all the basics that you need to know to get started, like how to read a pattern, how to cut it out, how to select your size, and really some basics of sewing garments. So I have that all outlined. I probably started it in 2019. And now that I have my improv quilting class done, which I'm so excited about having that done. Um, and I'm so excited to see people signing up and making quilts. Um, but anyway, I'd really love to work on this beginner course because um, I think that making your own garments can be really life-changing, especially if you are like me and you're not a regular height or you just don't feel comfortable in a lot of the clothing that's available in stores. I think making your own can be such a game changer. So whether it's because you can't find the styles in the stores that you like, or you can't find the size that you like, making your own is just a really great option. I've not made a list of patterns or things that I want to sew in 2021. I didn't do a very good job of sewing the things on my list for 2020. I kind of just went out the window when the pandemic hit. Um, I sewed a few things, maybe like three out of the nine, but I just kind of feel like whatever, everything changed. <laughs> Those clothes were made for things that are no longer, were going to be made for things that are no longer happening. So everything kind of changed. I don't really know what I want to sew in 2021. Um, I do want to sew some new underwear and refresh my underwear drawer. Um, I have a bunch of elastic for it and probably some knit fabric scraps around. So probably sew some new underwear. I want to keep working through my stash. I have a lot of really beautiful fabrics. Um, I would like to make a button down shirt that's been on my list for a few years. Um, I have the pattern and the fabric already. Just need to finish up a lot of other things and then I can start working on that project just for myself. So that might be the next one. If you want to stay up to date on everything that is happening with Sew DIY, I invite you to follow the channel if you're not already. And you can also sign up for my newsletter. I send out a newsletter about once a week and I will put a link to that down in the show notes. Happy New Year and happy sewing.